We're going to turn now to that firestorm rocking the Grammys, which is three days to go until the big show. Astrid Recording Academy CEO Deborah Dugan, the first female chief, says she was pushed out after exposing sexual harassment, nomination rigging, and a toxic, quote, boys club that sidelined women and minority groups. She's standing by. You see her right there. First, Amy here with a closer look at the controversy. Good morning, Amy. That's right. Good morning, George. The week leading up to the Grammys is typically cause for celebration. There are parties nearly every night, but the Recording Academy, which has been trying to clean up its act when it comes to diversity, is now firing back at those explosive new allegations. And the Grammy for Album of the Year. And the Grammy goes to... And the Grammy goes to... Music's most anticipated night fastly becoming music's biggest scandal. With just three days to go till the Grammy Awards, former Recording Academy CEO and President Deborah Dugan dropping bombshell allegations in a discrimination complaint against the Recording Academy of Arts and Sciences calling it a boys club that puts their financial interest above the Academy's mission. In a 46-page complaint, Dugan alleges that the voting process behind the awards is ripe with corruption, involving secret committees, which she claims push forward artists with whom they have relationships. A practice Dugan alleges last year affected artists like Ed Sheeran and Ariana Grande. Who she claims both failed to get nominations for Song of the Year, in part because of favoritism and conflicts of interest. Dugan claims the board even manipulates the nominations process to ensure that certain songs or albums are nominated when the Grammy's producer wants a particular song performed during the show. In the complaint, Dugan also highlighting what she calls the Grammy's long-standing struggle with gender inequality and lack of diversity when it comes to the most prestigious awards, like Album of the Year, saying those awards rarely go to R&B stars like Beyonce or Kanye West, but instead, the winners tend to be in the rock, country, and pop genres. Can't possibly accept this award. My artist of my life is Beyonce in this album for me. The Lemonade album was just... <laughs> So monumental, Beyonce. It was so monumental. Dugan, the Academy's first female CEO, also says she was sexually harassed by the Academy's general counsel, who categorically denies her allegations, and also accuses her predecessor, Neil Portnow, of sexually assaulting a female recording artist. Allegations he says are ludicrous and untrue. The Recording Academy firing back, alleging it was Dugan who created a toxic and intolerable work environment, adding it immediately launched independent investigations to review both Ms. Dugan's potential misconduct and her subsequent allegations. Overnight, women on the executive committee of the Recording Academy calling the allegations deeply disturbing and heartbreaking, adding, we would not have taken precious time away from our families and careers if we felt that it was a boys club. George? Okay, Amy, mean, thanks very much. We are joined now by Deborah Dugan, along with her attorney, Doug Wigdor. Thank you both for coming in Thank you, uh, this morning. Well, the battle's pretty well joined right here. Let's start where Amy uh, left off. Those women on the executive committee said this is just not a boys club. Right. Um, well, when I came in um, as the first CEO of the Recording Academy in 62 years female, um, there are um, definitely amazing, amazing people that work there in the Recording Academy and also on the board. But at the very onset, um, in fact, uh, under the guise of a, wo a work dinner, I was propositioned by the um, general counsel, an uh, uh, entertainment lawyer in, of enormous, enormous power in the industry. Mr. Katz. Yes. He categorically denies those allegations, says you got the dinner completely wrong. Yes, well, um, starting with calling me babe and saying how uh, attractive I was and pretty I was, uh, it, it, you know, the evening went on to, uh, you know, a, 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 kiss uh trying to kiss me and uh all the way through i felt like i was being tested in how much would i acquiesce um and i realized that that was a power setting move just on the onset as i was coming into the committee course, the, the grammys so, really is on life support right now i mean the statements that they're giving about about ms dugan uh, creating a toxic work environment getting the executive uh, board members to make statements they are in panic mode right now and the fact of the matter is this 
Uh, Deborah, right here, she worked for eight years as an executive at EMI. She worked for eight years as a president at Disney. She worked for eight years for Bono at Red, raising hundreds of millions of dollars to eradicate AIDS. She never once filed an HR complaint, and there was never once an HR well, complaint filed against her. I, I understand that, but pretext. one of the things the Recording Academy says, and I appreciate you bringing that in, the Academy says it's curious that you never raised these allegations that you raised in the last week until a week after you were accused of uh, bad conduct yourself. No, all along I had been bringing up what was happening um, and all along the... Um, you didn't file a motion like that, a formal complaint. No, she did. She filed a I formal did. complaint. Yes, I did. She, she filed HR. a formal complaint, and that's when she was placed on administrative leave for the first time over a completely innocuous complaint by a woman who's being represented by a law firm that represent, represented Harvey Weinstein. This was an executive assistant. But they, so they say you filed the, I understand that, but just because just yeah. I want to clear this up, they yeah. say you filed this complaint only after, a week after you were accused of the conduct. No, no, no. It was weeks after she was not on administrative leave. What happened was that she filed the complaint, then she was placed on administrative leave and it's important to know that this was a complaint made by an executive assistant an administrative assistant who had worked as an administrative assistant for the, to the prior CEO the CEO that was accused of rape and she comes in as the CEO she's paid less than the prior two male CEOs and she's there now and she wants to have her own she wants to have her own assistant like every other CEO in corporate America she's the only CEO in corporate America that would be placed on an admin you leave. also wrote in that complaint I'm writing this note not for you to take in any action at this time. Why didn't you want them to take action if the charges were so serious? Because I actually wanted to make change from within. I moved across the country. I had a great job. I believe in what the Recording Academy should stand for for artists. And I was trying at each step to take a deep breath and say, okay, I can make a difference. I can fix this. Um, I can work with uh, this team. And um, when I first started uh, and at that first meeting with Joel, there was also a board meeting, and I found out that there was a rape allegation against the former CEO that had not been brought to the attention he of the board. He denies that as well. Well, he doesn't deny that there was a rape allegation. He denies that he committed rape. Let's get to the broader complaints you're making as well. You say you wrote that the Grammy voting process is ripe with corruption. So are you saying that when we're all watching the Grammys this Sunday, we should be thinking the fix is in, this is rigged? I'm saying that the system should be transparent and that there are there are incidents of conflict of interest that um, taints the results. I couldn't say more positive things about all of the nominations and everybody that performs and oh my god I, I hate that I'm in this situation uh, because I'd much rather be here talking about the artists and the music but um, I can't help but have to say there are conflicts of interest that well, go and on. And I want to talk about one of those specifically because it's pretty startling complaint. You write in, in the 2019 Song of the Year process, quote, one artist who initially ranked 18th out of 20 in the 2019 Song of the Year category ended up with a nomination. This artist was actually permitted to sit on the Song of the Year nomination committee. Incredibly, this artist is also represented by a member of the board. Who is this person? Yes. We're not going to out that I person. Don't, I don't, for, for the artist's privacy and for the integrity of all those artists that are going to perform um, and get nominations this year, I don't want to say, it, but it's not even just that one room. I have evidence that in another room, because uh, there were complaints made in the jazz category, and... Um, so you do have evidence. Right. That was going to be my follow-up question. I do. And who, where are you going to present that? I have a claim that I filed. And this is, of course, the year that Ed Sheeran and Ariana, Ariana Grande did not get nominated. Yes. This is pretty serious. Yeah. It's very serious, and I wouldn't be here if I didn't think I could make a difference. And we don't want to be here, George. I mean, like, we're forced to be here. I mean, I, she was the one that was placed on leave. Today, I was supposed to be giving a speech on the Billboard Power 100 about women in music. So you, you love the artists, you love the Grammys. Are you going to watch on Sunday? I am. It's kind of, you know, I am. I worked very hard on the show. Um, and I love the artists that are going to be performing, and I love all those that are nominated that don't get the honor of, of being on the so show. So we can all watch in good conscience as well? Yes, I think so. Thank you for joining us this morning. Thank you, George. Robin?